You're listening to Razor Riffs with Keith Razor and Alan Lee, right here on LA Talk Radio. The great Jackie Marling is uh, coming in via Zoom. Hey, Jackie. Hello there. How are you, buddy? I am. uh, There we are. (laughs) I'm fine. I'm fine. Oh, well, thank you so much. Thank you. Don't you don't have to worry about thanking me. What am I going to do? I got nowhere to go. (laughs) Well, well, Jackie, uh, before we start, I just want you to know you and I have something in common that we have the same manager. I don't know if you knew that, Dante. I I don't have a manager. Oh, Dante's no longer your manager. <laughs> he no, he was. He, he I met him, but he's never oh. been my manager. He's a very nice guy. Oh, okay. well, he's. I he... met him. I met him at the uh, the now long forgotten. Uh, what was the upside down hotel? The, the name that was upside down. The the stand the standard the standard. Oh, the standard. Yeah. Oh. He's a real nice guy. Yeah, I met him there because he was there with um, Ron. Uh, Ron who, Jeremy, who's the porn yeah. star? Ron Jeremy. Did he yeah. pass away? No, he's arrested for like uh, 50 rapes or something. I, I, I you know, <laughs> I'm not the smartest guy. Are, are you rolling tape? Uh, well, yeah, we're, yeah. You want me to stop? No, 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 no. no. I just want, we're I don't, yeah. I don't like to waste anything. Sometimes I talk for half an hour with somebody and they go, well, should we start the interview? I'm like, what are you, an idiot? You know, the best stuff is the first few minutes. <laughs> no, I'm like, how the how the hell does a porn star get in trouble for rape? I just don't get that. I mean, what are they there for? I, I'm not saying you should be able to take advantage of a girl or vice versa. Yeah. But it's kind of the point is to have sex, I would think, on a porn, you know. <laughs> it, it, it should. It just. It, it hit me as an anomaly. I'm sure. I, I'm sure I'm being an idiot. You know. Yeah. Like just just because you're a baseball player doesn't mean you can go hit somebody with a baseball bat. No, well, that's, oh, that was a lot better analogy than I intended. <laughs> well, well, the one of the worst things about Ron Jeremy is not just his porn career, but his stand up. His stand up's terrible. I didn't even I didn't even know he did stand up. I just I, I just thought with a peck of that big it was hard enough to stand up. <laughs> uh, He's a nice guy. He's an old friend. Like tw- twenty or thirty years ago, he did a porn movie and and wore a nice stump jacket, joke man t shirt in it, which was a claim to fame. And I still haven't seen it. One someday somebody's got to send me a clip of that. Oh, well, that's cool. Well, now I feel embarrassed. I feel Dante lied to me just to get me to sign with him because I was like, oh, my God, I would love to be with you if Jackie's with you. I don't know. You know, don't give him any crap about it. You know, (laughs) you know, I'll tell you one thing he did for me was it, it gave me an indication how how out of the loop I am in the show business world. Yeah. A long time ago, like in 1979, we did a show at a place in New Jersey, and I was the MC. So my name was not on this list, but I had a little piece of paper. I could send it to you. I, I scanned it, <clears throat> a little piece of paper that had the list of the people that were on the show. And three of the names on the list were spelled wrong. They yeah. spelled Jer- Jerry Seinfeld wrong. They spelled Eddie Murphy wrong. And the guy smel- spelled Gilbert Gottfried wrong. So I thought, what a piece of piece of history this is. And this is even before everybody was so huge, just the fact that everybody was spelled wrong. And I held on to it. And I guess somebody contacted somebody. And, and at any rate, it, it came across Dante's uh, email or something. Because it somehow I, I must have put that on my website or something or told a story about it. And so it was in the zeitgeist. It was floating around on the web. And then Jerry Seinfeld had 
Eddie Murphy on coffee and you know drinking coffee in cars with comedians. Yeah, and they and they wanted to use that piece of paper, and I guess the producer was trying to find out whose it was, and the producer wrote to Dante, um, or wrote to somebody who sent it to Dante. We're looking for permission to use this uh, scan of this piece of paper, and we were told it uh, it belongs to Jackie Martling. Do you know her? <laughs> so, uh, so I said, I, "Well, I guess I'm officially out of the show business loop." Do you know her? Here I got a a piece of paper with Gilbert and Jerry and Eddie on it. From a show I emceed 40 years ago, and they don't even know if I'm a guy or a girl. You know, I mean, this has got nothing to do with pronouns. This has got everything to do with nobody knowing who the frick I am, you know. Yeah. But that's, and that's as close as I came with the, uh, Dante turned me on to that. And I wound up getting a few dollars for it. But I don't think I even, I don't think I, I don't think he even asked me for a cut or anything. You know, I, I, I barely remember meeting him, except I know I not, I I thought I liked him. He's a decent character, you know. Oh yeah, he's great. Uh, I, I I apologize. I didn't introduce you to the trusty sidekick Victor. Well, I saw the stuff on his chin. I thought maybe he's sitting upside down. <laughs> oh, oh, that's not. Is that a beard or is he holding the microphone? I think his mic's off. Oh, it's both. It's both. We can't hear all, you, Victor. All, all that hair is in your microphone. <laughs> okay. What about now? There he is. There yeah, he there is. you go. All right. Hey, let me turn off the fan so that doesn't get caught up in the mix. No, uh, Mr. Martling, hey. Um, Don't even... you ever call me that, Jackie. Okay. Well, just out of respect, Jackie, <laughs> my comedy brother, listen, I want it because I told Keith, I was like, how many questions do you want me to ask? And I told him. Yeah, I, this guy I, had like 30 questions for I, it. I don't know. No, I had 12 solid questions, though. But, yeah, I did have 30 questions. But um, I remember you. You you have one of the funniest jokes of all time. I'm not going to burn your material, but it has to do with a newlywed couple on an airplane going to Dallas. I have do, you, told do you remember that where you heard where you saw that? It was part of a showcase. I forgot. I think it was Red Fox who was hosting Red Fox's dirty, dirty jokes. And to this day, Dice says, Andrew Dice Clay says, that video is what propelled him on to other things that propelled him to, he said that was the first thing where he got traction. Obviously, I'm still looking for traction, but that, well, all that respect, is a classic, classic, classic joke. All due respect, like that joke has stood with me because I don't know when it was recorded, but I heard it in the mid 90s. 1985. I, 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 I was on I was road. born in 85. I was oh, born in 85. No, up. no. Okay, I'm a 38 year old little kid. Okay, with, with gray hair, but I'm a little kid. But but I he, was uh I was on the road with Rich Jenny, and this oh. little and this little tiny Southern Belle in in uh, Savannah, Georgia, came up and said, "I will tell you a joke. I will tell you a good joke." You all want to hear a good joke? I said, yeah, 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 we all want to hear a good joke. And she told me that joke, and I just about fell down. I laughed so hard. You know, we're not going to go into it. You want to see it? Go to Red Fox's Dirty, Dirty Jokes, 1985 by Vested, Vestron Video or whatever it was. It was me and Red uh, I still got the clip of Red Fox saying, here's Jackie Motlin, the inventor of Dial a Dirty Joke. I love that. That that was, was one of my twelve questions too. About, <laughs> but I swear to God, that joke. I even before I was a comedian, I heard that joke in the '90s, and I've told that joke so many times. I was like, Jackie, the joke man, Martlin. That is a that is a crowd like, pleaser. I haven't told oh. that on stage in thirty years. I did it so for so long. I finally it was like eating too much of the same candy. I was like, I can't tell oh. that joke. I, I just can't tell that joke. But was, I, I, that's that's crowd, such a that's such fun. It is a crowd please. Oh yeah. no! It's it, like honestly, out of because I saw that whole special, and out of everything that I I saw, and like you know, even with classic Red Fox, I'm just like, this is a hilarious. Are you going to Dallas? Oh, <laughs> and the, way, the, way, the way you leaned into it, I was like, are you going to Dallas? Oh. oh. 
everyone's going to Dallas. Oh, going to, and I'm just like, oh my God, this guy is incredibly hilarious. Where where did he like like this is just so funny. This is the funniest thing that I've ever yeah. heard in my life. Like I was howling at my friend's house and his parents were asleep in the next room. I'm <laughs> howling and I'm like, this is the best joke I've ever heard. You know, Matt, I don't know why, but you like I hadn't heard about that joke in decades. And you're like the third or fourth person to bring it up in the last month. And I'm whether it's just in the air or whether maybe it aired somewhere it, on TV or something, no. I'm not sure. I haven't seen it since the '90s. That's how. That's how, like like everyone's like, oh yeah, you know Jackie the Joke Man Martling, like you know from the Howard Stern show. And I'm like, well, what about the Red Fox special? I mean, I know you, <laughs> I know you killed it on the Howard Stern show, but you murdered it. I mean, I mean, you murdered it on the Howard Stern show. Don't get me wrong, but you really murdered it. <clears throat> on that show, I was just like, no, because it was joke after joke after joke after joke after joke. You know, you know who was in the audience for that show was Paul Provenza. Do you know who that is? You know, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the he green. was one of the yeah. one of the producers of the uh, of the Aristocrats, oh. and it was uh, it was and and Lenny Bruce's last girlfriend mm -hmm. was on that show, and uh, Red Fox's protege, Ronaldo Ray. I don't know what happened to him. And Bob Robert Schimmel. That's the first time I met Bob. Oh my Schimmel. god! It was oh, Robert wow. was show. awesome. He was the nicest guy in the world. Great character. So, well, that's a blast from the past. That was that was that and was now, fun for me to hear that. And no, now I we mean, go to the. I'm future. still excited. I'm still With, excited. Thirty eight years later. Thirty eight years later. He says that happened in eighty five. I was born in eighty five. I'm thirty eight years old. That you know what? Still <laughs> hilarious. You got to get a life. <laughs> <laughs> I was studying comedy. I was studying the greats. I was studying. Uh, I was studying Jackie the Joke Man Martling. Sorry, there we go. <laughs> you know, no, so so. You know, well, now I, we go thirty. You know, into the future, and, and you have a documentary called Joke Man, which is what you want to talk about, which is now on Apple, I believe, right? I just it, it. it's on it's on a real lot of streaming platforms, and they're all listed on on the website on jokemanmovie.com it shows all the different places where you can see it it's jokemanmovie.com the other day sent me somebody sent me a text and said hey i have google plus and i had a bunch of credits stored up and i didn't know what i'd use them for and all of a sudden i realized i could use them to watch your documentary i'm like that's cool whatever it takes man so yeah. i guess it's out there on like expo i don't I don't. I have never played a video game, believe it or not, in my entire life. So I don't know from Xbox, Y box, uh, yeah. your box, <laughs> her smelly box, whatever it is. I don't know from any of that, you know. But jokemanmovie.com. dot com and the and the film is getting terrific reviews, and everybody is really excited, and it's it's making me very very happy, very very happy. Now, what, what was it? What was it like that. filming that? Because didn't you? like started before the pandemic and then the pandemic happened. Like Yeah, but there was no filming of it. It was uh Ian Carr, the producer and director, he his uh his company is IKA Collective. Mm -hmm. And I just gave them a whole bunch of pictures and some old hunks of video and then they started interviewing people. So he's kind of assembling it. It wasn't chronological at all all except for the one time he came with me. And we took a, uh, he, you know, it, it, it was the classic thing where he rode all the way to a gig with me and shot a lot of footage. And then at the end of the gig, that's when I got home and jumped into Long Island Sound. Uh, you know, I don't want to give a spoiler, but. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't, but. I and, just um, <laughs> and it was, and it was, and it was great fun, you know, but. Uh, but for the most part, I wasn't there when he taped people like, you know, my family and my friends and the other comics. Oh, you know, yeah. it was all it was all news to me. You know, it was the first time I, I saw a rough cut is the first time I saw any of those interviews, you know, and everybody was so kind. I was like, you know, wow, yeah. they, they really went out of their way to be nice. And honestly, everybody told the truth. You know, they weren't they weren't, you know, sniffing up my butt, but everybody <laughs> always Everybody doesn't always tell the truth, you know, so it, it was refreshing, you know. It's nice that they said good things about you because I don't know, like, if they ever interviewed somebody who just had, like, a terrible story about you and you're like, I don't want that on my documentary, you know. Well, you know, as far as I know, he didn't, uh, 
didn't not use anything, you know, and I don't care. I don't care that, you know, a bad story is a good story. You know what I mean? So <laughs> oh, uh, you know, that's you the know. words of a real comedian right there, because yeah. Yeah, 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 you know, like, you know, don't, you know, don't use that. It'll embarrass me. I, I'm not sure the word embarrass is even in my lexicon, you know? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> No, I mean, no, that's part of not caring what other people think about you. And that's part of being a successful comedian. You're a legend. When, when well, Keith but asked- we, everybody cares what people think about them. It's just like, um, but you don't care what people think that, that you don't really uh, adhere to their values or respect their opinions, you know. Yeah. Somebody thinks there's somebody thinks I'm an idiot for telling dirty jokes. Fine, I'm just not going to hang around with that person. You know, it's that simple. You know, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. And I know, and I'm a dirty comic too. And so, like, sometimes people are just like, "Hey, you're a dirty comic. That's all you can do." And it's just like, wait a minute, I'm more than just a dirty comic. I'm a comic, and I'm a funny comic. So just because I'm dirty and I make people laugh, even though you know what I mean, I, I was told that. You know the gray-haired audience on Thursdays. They don't want to hear the, the the fucks and the shits and go fuck yourselves or whatever, right? But they laugh at that. They laugh at that stuff if it's funny. <clears throat> well, you that- know, I'm not a fan of the fuck shit, fuck shit, fuck shit. I'm a fan of uh, what works in the in the embodiment of the joke. Right. You know, oh, absolutely. You know, you know like uh, of course, I you know occasionally I'll you know I'll come out with the occasional you know fuck you. That's a good joke, but that's <laughs> that, that's almost that should be the name of my albums. You know, so you know yeah. who cares? No one's it's stopping you, man. You release it, man. It'd be successful, man. Like every single one of your albums I've heard have been great. They've been funny, and like one of the things I was going to ask you is like you were eight months into comedy, and you released your first comedy album. So I was wondering about that, like um, how, like, like you're eight months in, you release this comedy album. How did the positivity or negativity impact your career and camaraderie with your fellow comics? Were people like hating? Like, there's like ten year comics that are like, "Hey, you eight month comic, you shouldn't be putting out a." <clears throat> no, like- they, because there were there were not. Uh, I was on Long Island, and there was yeah. a small gang of us, <clears throat> and. I wasn't among guys that had been around for 10 years or anything. And <clears throat> and everybody was a little bit quizzical about the whole idea, you know, because uh, it was an odd situation because I had worked in a recording studio and I realized that any moron with a few dollars and a picture and a master <laughs> tape can have, their own, <laughs> can, they can have their own album, but people didn't know that. And 1979, <laughs> like... Uh, 1979, George Carlin had an album, and and Cheech and Chong had an album, and Robert Klein had an, had an album. You know, this isn't counting the old Red Fox, Bell Barth albums from way back. You know, yeah. the great, great joke albums. I mean, Rodney didn't even have an album until like 1982. You know, and Rodney's uh, act, yeah. But Rodney's but the act, thing yeah. was that uh, I knew how to do that. And I was record. I had always recorded all my shows when I played music, when I told jokes, and then we started comedy in this little tiny restaurant bar. It wasn't. Even, there were no comedy clubs on Long Island. Yeah. And I I recorded my act on a cassette player, you know, with crowd mics because I knew a whole thing about recording. And I told my girlfriend, I said, "Geez, they laughed at everything I said last night. I really should make an album." She said, "Well, what are you waiting for?" So I bought a hundred dollars from fifteen different people, and took my class picture from eighth grade, <laughs> with, with flipping the bird, and, uh, and I just sh- I just chopped up a show and, and made it to two twenty minute sides, and it was crazy because nowadays everybody has merch and everybody sells stuff, but here I was <clears throat> in nineteen eighty. And I've got a oh, stack wow. of albums, so at the end of each show, I'm standing by the door selling my albums and the guys were like making fun of me you know not yeah. mean like breaking my balls like there he is with his stupid records and i'm autographing my records and the people buying them for five bucks a piece yeah but you were making sudden, money they weren't that was a lot of the 80s 1980 especially that all was of a sudden the guys re- yeah all of a sudden the guys realized wait a minute we made 40 bucks a piece tonight and marley made an extra 75 bucks selling his stupid records maybe he knows what he's doing yeah. You know what I mean? And I just kept doing it. And it was years before anybody else had it because then it moved from 
LPs to cassettes, but it was the same thing. You had to be able to record it and do it. When I ran Governor's Comedy Shop, I, you know, I, uh, my future ex-wife and me created Governor's Comedy Shop, and I had microphones hanging there, and every comedian that performed for the weekend at Governor's went home with two cassettes that had Friday night first show on one side and Friday night second show on the other side. Oh, my God. And, this, nice. and the second tape had Saturday night first show and recorded really well with crowd mics and everything. I mean, 20 or 30 years later, I ran into Carol Leifer and she said, Jackie, I still got my governor's cassette. It's one of my prized possessions. Yeah. You know, because it was the same thing as having, a, having an album. And I'm sure half the guys didn't even listen to him. You know, comedians are a very odd bunch. You know, I used yeah. to ask them to come on the Howard Stern show and they'd say, how much does it pay? <laughs> I said, well, what's it pay? you got the whole tri-state area listening to you, you moron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, ah, and you're trying hey, to help out your buddies. Yeah. yeah and, you, you know, and, and to, like, to this is day, it pay? how much they does come it pay? Up, they come Jackie, up to how much does it say, pay? I, they say, I can't believe I turned you down coming on the Howard Stern show back in 1984. I was like, well, I try if you if somebody doesn't understand advertising, you will never get it through their head. Oh but, yeah, you know. definitely. Jackie, hey Jackie, I, w I wanted to ask you, uh, what what's it like when like say you're at a comedy club and you see a comic, you know, take one of your old jokes? You know what I mean? Like that. Does that upset you, or do, like how do you handle? That, that? Well, they aren't my jokes. Okay? okay, they're they're old old. The jokes have been around forever and ever. It's really funny, like. The jokes have been around forever, but all of a sudden, if I tell a joke that went around the, the, the horn recently, like within the last couple of weeks or months, <clears throat> and you tell that joke, somebody will say, oh, that's an old joke, because they yeah. just heard it, you know? And so I've always said, anybody, take out as many of my jokes as you want and go up and try and make them work. And some people can make them work a little and some can't. But I do <laughs> have a problem. If somebody goes up on stage and tells a joke exactly like I tell it, with the same, you know, expressions and the same everything, and they actually really mimic me. That because that's stealing. That's, you know, that's stealing. stealing somebody. That's stealing, that's stealing somebody's personality as much as jokes. taking. Right, just like so taking somebody's Star Trek bit. But I've never claimed <laughs> to own the jokes. And people say, "Oh, well, you tell old jokes." I said, "Look, grab yourself some old jokes and, and go on stage and, and have a have a party." Because uh, you have, go up, you go up on stage and tell a joke and it doesn't get a laugh. And then you tell another joke and doesn't get a laugh. You go to it your gets, jokes. <laughs> it gets old real quick. It, yeah. it, you know, we all know how long, you know, five minutes of silence can be. It's like, you know, <laughs> you know either you make it work or, or you don't, you know. Yeah. Who, who is, uh, like, the one person on the Howard Stern show that, that you because I mean you were you were the sidekick, but there had to be somebody that you just didn't like, and whenever they got on, you're like, oh god, this fucker. You know what I mean? Like, what do you mean a guest? Yeah, like you didn't really uh, want it. No, I'll, I'll tell you, a lot of people were so enamored with this. Uh, I can't even remember the the i i i iPhone pussy. What what was the name of the band? The 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 uh, right pussy, right pussy. No, the. Uh, uh, the clown pussy, the clown posse. Oh, the clown and posse. Think, yeah. and think clown posse. I, I couldn't have been more bored. Like me and Fred were like, I don't, we don't know what's going on. You know, I could have cared less about <laughs> that crap. <laughs> and, and everybody was so enamored with, with Beetlejuice, who, who I thought was just uh, so sad. I mean, uh, just such a, a horribly disfigured human being. And just there for, you know, it made the show into a carnival. And yeah, it was funny. It was fine. I wrote jokes and everything, and I wasn't annoyed by it. But you know, I I, if I didn't latch on, and neither did Fred. We didn't really latch on to that. You know, yeah. there's not a lot of wit. You know, mm -hmm. a guy comes in and is completely disformed from childhood. That's that's not real witty. And yeah. you know. drinking. And drinking. <clears throat> but, but um, but, but there no, weren't, I... there don't, weren't any people really that. Uh, you know that you, you got along with everybody. You know you really did. It was never Beatles like, oh, so and so's coming on. He's such a piece of crap. It never happened. You know. Jackie, did you ever see Beetlejuice's porno? No, no, no. But I'm I sorry. Mean, <laughs> he, he, <laughs> your, he your was, reaction was beautiful. Sorry, he was. Uh, um, he came on a bunch of times. Oh yeah. Before I left the show, 
but he wasn't a, a, a an integral. I don't know how often they started having him on. I think I think Doug Goodstein started managing him. Yeah, you know, and I think he was going through those things where they threw him around. You know, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah I, 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 that is on my bucket list to make sure I see Beetlejuice's porno. You know, oh, dude, I ta- I'll, I'll send you the I'll take fr- No, I'll stop, stop it. Stop. I take pride in the fact that I had no idea he had one. No, <laughs> no, it's, it's, the, it's the Habib show. But, like, you probably find on the next video. Uh, I, 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 enough. Next subject. Yes. Okay, so, no, 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 no. Okay, no, no, you're right. No, I don't want to disrespect you. No, no, no. Gilbert I, I, Godfrey I, I, must have been a great guest. He, he was would, wonderful. Yeah, he, he was. was if, if I gave him a, I'd, sometimes I'd write something down and run over and throw it to him. And when he used one of my jokes, I'd always, uh, yeah, I'd always be thrilled. You know, always be thrilled. It was great. You're great. You know, I only and met he, him. He, he, he's a, he he had a great podcast. I did his podcast three or four times, and no nobody laughed harder at each other's jokes than me and Gilbert. I mean, we would scream and howl. Okay. I told him a filthy joke one time at a film festival. We were standing outside the tent in the rain, and he fell in the mud. That's always been one of my favorite. <laughs> he, he fell in the mud. <laughs> so, the joke was so disgusting. Oh. Hey, rest in peace. Oh, Jesus, that's funny. <laughs> that's so funny. Like, <laughs> and, you know, he was an artist. He, like, he's he, they're selling his artwork now, and he, he did brilliant art. And I knew him for forty years, and I never knew that. Oh, now really? They're, they're, they're selling, uh, you know, uh, you know, what do they call? You know, the memento, not the... pictures. It, 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 uh, when they when they recreate them, you know. Yeah. Oh, uh, a replica or something. Yeah, replicas of his art, and they're yeah. selling really well. People, are, and it's good because you know, it looks you like know, original. Although I'm sure he left his kid and his wife, his kids and his wife, a lot of money because he still had the first nickel he ever spent, uh, he ever made. Oh know? yeah, definitely. Yeah, I saw the documentary, and he still had like all the soaps and shampoos and lotions from every single hotel, which is just. And, and, and that I was, was, I mean, I work with them a lot. You know, I mean, th- that was real. They they didn't gather that for the film. Oh, I mean, no, no. They, there's no way. Because yeah. there was, like, different ge- generations of Embassy Suites, different uh, different generations of Hilton, different generations of, of just, of, uh, of Doubletree. There were so many different ones. It's like, nah, he's not faking it. There's no way he's not faking it. But, you know. So funny. Uh, it, it, no, I couldn't believe it. I'm watching it. I'm like, I thought I was a hoarder. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I, I, I can show you the lotions that I got here from the hotels from the last 10 years. But, you know, it's, it's um, yeah, that was an impeccable collection uh, with the documentary with Gilbert Godfrey. And it was just like like one of those things where it's just like you cannot believe he has. Yeah, soap. I told his wife, Dara, I said, you're selling his, fo- his artwork. They sell some of that soap. Jesus, that you know. Shame so he sh- <laughs> sh- 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 should have autographed them all. You know. Yeah. Did you really say that? Did you? Really oh, say it? That's hilarious. Jeez. I don't care if you said it or not. I hope you did. But that is the funniest thing ever. It's like, hey, still some of that soap. <laughs> like he he went out of his way to you, you know, especially after nine eleven. You know, with the liquids. You know how much you could have inside. He really took a risk, you know, putting those in his bag. So yeah, the, the, those are worth money. All right. Character, true character. So true Jack, character. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about ma- mail order bride. I wanted to see if you had any cool uh, Vincent <clears throat> Pastor stories because I feel he hates me for some reason, and I feel he's like hold the on. nicest guy. <clears throat> hold on, hold on. Um, <laughs> okay, I now I, I had to log lock into that mail order. Oh, all right, I was a. Uh, yeah, I was I was the uh, the guy that the the mob sold everything to. Now, who do you think didn't like you? Oh, Vincent Pastor, he's Pussy Lips on the Sopranos. Or pussy no, not boy. Pussy Lips. Pussy boy. Big, big pussy. Big, big pussy. Big pussy. Big pussy. Yeah. Um, he, I don't I don't think he was in Mail Order Bride. I think he was in uh, Rules for Men. Oh, okay, maybe that's the one I was talking about. Oh, but he he was great. He actually. He actually played a lawyer named Mr. Bowels. <laughs> and my my uh Mr. my Bowles. wife at the time, Nancy, played the um she was the judge. Yeah. And I I was a very low life lawyer who had been 
kicked off, uh, kicked out of the courtroom for a couple of years for bad behavior. And then my first time back, I'm there with the star of the show. Um, I'm his sidekick lawyer. And I said something filthy and she kicked me out of the courtroom. So for my, for my acting, for my acting, I had to walk out of a courtroom cursing my wife the entire time. And oh, I don't no. need to tell you that that was like, that was method acting. <laughs> <laughs> all, all the way out there, you know, all the way from the, from the judge's bench all the way out down the hall. I'm cursing the whole time. And they said, wow, that's great. We did it in one take. I said, come on, let's do a few more. Let's do a few more. <laughs> and, then he, all day. <laughs> and, and Vinnie, Vinnie Pastore came up in front of her cause he had, I think he had ripped off his tenants or whatever he had done. And she keeps, <laughs> yeah, yeah, she keeps yelling, at Mr. Bowles, Mr. Bowles. And it was so funny. Oh, God. Oh, I didn't even know about that. That's some, some super insider stuff that. And he's a, he's a good, you know, he, he, he prides himself in being, he really, what's really funny is he really is a big pussy. That's no. what's really funny. And, and, and he's a, a pussy cat. And he tries to come across with this hard ass look and he poses no. for pictures like like he's so tough and like, you know, you can knock him over with a feather, you know. Yeah. I have a feeling he's actually <laughs> a great guy. Just he, he has that New York vibe, you know what I mean? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And they all do, you know. All those mobster slash actor slash producer, like yeah, you know, everybody's so full of crap. Jackie, you're from you're from Long Beach, right? Long I'm Beach, from- New York. I'm yes. from the north North Shore of Nassau County, Oyster Bay. Okay, just so south not... of Oyster Bay, a little town called East Norwich, which is a not even a whistle stop. It's a little tiny, tiny hamlet. But Oyster Bay is like the the is main town. It, it, it's the town of Oyster Bay, but it's a little hamlet called Oyster Bay, and the oysters just about gone because they've been picking them clean since they got there in, like, 1650. Oh, shit. Wow. There might not be oysters. Okay. No. Okay. So. Um, no, we no. still we still got them. Oh, good, <laughs> good, they, good, they, good. Used to just about, they used to just about jump in your boat, you know. Yeah. But, oh. Uh, it's, it's a gar- this is a garden spot here. It's, I, I live in Bayville now, which is just north of Oyster Bay. I live, uh, I live right on Long Island Sound. And uh, it's right out my window, and um, I live in heaven. I just have been very lucky, and um, and and to have this that documentary come out is just the icing on the cake, you know. I just saw it right now. It's a great documentary, and I'm. Oh, a doc- thank you. I love documentaries. Like I love them more than movies, the like regular movies, because I want to hear the nitty gritty. I want to. I want to hear the backstory. I want to hear the real story. And so when I saw Joke Man, and I just saw it because it was just like Keith. Keith hit me up at ten o'clock. He's like, "Hey, you want to co-host for for Jackie Martling?" I was like, "Jackie the Joke Man, Joke Man Martling? Of course that 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 man is has one of my favorite jokes of all time." Ah, I, seriously, you made my mom are, laugh. Are we going to talk you about made... that Dallas joke for five minutes again? I mean, no, yeah. no, 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 yeah, no, no. I'm, I'm not burning well, his material. I'm not burning his material. Let's talk about your beard. Okay, let's talk about my beard. Yeah, I, fu- I messed up. I messed up. So now I look like a like an Amish person w- 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 with um with uh, w- with an eating disorder, or look like it looks like, it, like a thyroid it looks, problem. It looks like you went down on it and came up with it. Oh, <laughs> I'm Mexican. When I go down, I stay down. I stay down. <laughs> I stay down. You can talk to my wife about it. Too. I'm so glad I shaved for this interview, so you can't make fun of my beard. Good, no, no, good, let, good. Let, let Jackie make fun of me because I love Jackie. Jackie, I, I've I've known you since the early '90s. All right, enough about know. me. Let's talk about me. Yeah. No. Okay. So let's talk about you. I mean, it's just like okay. Let me ask you. A so you guys are both comics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That or we're just winging it really hard. Yeah. Um, am I no. talking? Am I talking? What? Where am I talking to? Am I talking Los Angeles or Florida or? Uh, well, Keith I'm in Los Angeles. Angeles. Victor's in uh, the San Francisco San, Bay Area. San Francisco Bay Area. Yeah, but Keith, 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 Keith is my good friend. Keith, Keith helps me out when I go to SoCal. Keith is like really, really a crucial person in my life that I met at the. San Jose Improv when we were both opening for Jay Moore and he, he was a sweetheart. I'm talking about Keith. 
And so, um, any rate, no, no, Jay, Jay, Jay Moore was really cool. He didn't see my set. He's like, you're funny. And I was like, you didn't see my set. So back to Jackie. <laughs> Jackie, I wanted, yeah. to, I wanted to ask you, because, uh, you know, there were so many Stern shows, and, you know, it seemed like during the same time, like maybe all the interviews get lost and stuff. And I don't know if you were on this one, one, but uh, Stern interviewed Dana Plato the night before she died. And I was wondering, do you remember – Something like that. <clears throat> Whoa. I, re I remember that, but not as well as I should because <clears throat> I don't even know what show. We I was, I'm a lot older than those guys. Yeah. Um, older than Howard and Fred. So I, I miss that whole, you know, it was so funny. They used to make fun of me because they'd talk about the Brady Bunch or they'd talk about uh, different shows. And I, I had no idea about any of those shows because I had already gone to college and graduated and I was out drinking and playing rock and roll while this yeah. still in their mommy's house watching shows. So I, you know, no. they make fun of me because I didn't know a Brady Bunch episode. I'm like, I'm out drinking and getting laid, you morons. You know, I don't know that stuff. So mm -hmm. I don't even know what show data, they, what are the, the what show was she on? Well, uh, the, the I don't, the I don't know. I, I just, I just. Right? Wait, what was she on? No, no. I, I was just talking, talking about um, uh, the, the the band that Jackie was in. It was called the Off the Hours Rockers. No, no, no. Don't get off the, the Dana Plato. Wasn't she in one of those? Uh, it was on Dark. different strokes. Oh, all right. See, now that's a show that I never ever saw. Yeah, <clears throat> and I know it was a whole big deal. Now, was that a was that an overdose or I? You know what I? To tell yeah. you, you're absolutely right. People, it was a revolving door. The amount of people that were coming and going so fast, and I think she was back in the days before we got major guests. Yeah, you know, the, there were very few major guests that came on. So we, they were all people from all fringes of of wherever or fringes of show business, which who are so interesting. Of course, they're as interesting as a, as a celebrity. I mean, I mean, you know, who cares about the, the big time? You want to hear the nitty gritty, like you say, and, and, and what was going on. I think, I think she was kind of down and out, but I, I was not enchanted because I had no idea who she was. I didn't know the show. I didn't know any of that. So yeah. I'm just sitting there flying blind. You know, if I was writing questions for her, it, it wasn't because I knew what was going on, you know? I just but, thought, uh, I just thought maybe like you know you, you do the interview and then the next day they'd be like, oh yeah, that that we should be worried about the next guest because the guest we interviewed yesterday died today. So you know, what you're saying is that I write a line that Howard used to insult her that got her so depressed she killed herself. No, no. As, <laughs> as the co-host, I will without say that isn't what Keith meant. Without knowing anything, I'm saying <laughs> no. I did no. not kill Dana Plato. Jackie, Jackie, I guarantee you, I know you <laughs> murder somebody in the audience because they laughed so hard they couldn't breathe no more. I know, I guarantee you killed at least one person. Yeah, you are. Why you being that funny? Because you're that funny. Like, well, you, like, you know, like, there honestly, was a time. There was a time when they were actually backing ambulances up to the clubs where I worked. Oh my Jesus God! Really? Oh Jesus Christ! No, of course not. Oh, dude, I was no, gonna be like, that would be awesome. No, but but no, real talk though. I mean, like, I mean, I, I'm not a celebrity, and I've gotten people to fucking almost die at my shows because they choke on their food, they choke on their drinks. You know what oh, I mean? Oh Jesus! And you're Jesus. way more hilarious than me. And well, I'm, I'm, a story, I'm a storyteller. You're a joke teller. And so the, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the joke telling because it's just like that's where I started, but then it's just like I wanted to I wanted to do storytelling, but a lot of the problems with storytelling is that a lot of people go like three or four minutes without punchlines, and they tell a story, and I'm just like that that ain't me. Well, you can't go three minutes without a laugh. So no, 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 you can't go <clears throat> five seconds without a laugh. I mean, you know, people people do it and they can and it can be very, very interesting. But that's but that's not what I do. You know, even well, what so you do weird. Is, is amazing. If you amazing. watch if you watch Seinfeld and then you watch The Odd Couple, it's the same thing. Only the laughs are. Yes. One fifth 
as you know, there's like a, a laugh and then a, a while goes by and there's another laugh. And that's just how the timing was back then. And it was relaxed. I mean, nowadays I go to a movie and there's so many jump cuts and flashes. And I'm like, somebody just relax and hold still so we can watch what's going on. Yeah. And, you know, all of a sudden Leno's doing his show and Leno can't wait to say the next funny thing himself. And he's hardly listening to what the person's saying. Mm. <clears throat> and then you watch Carson, <laughs> who lets the whole thing unfold somewhat. But if you go back another jump and watch Jack Parr, if, if you like storytelling, like Jack Parr would ask a question and sit back like... Some the answers would be five minutes long. Like he asked Robert Kennedy a question and then just sat there and Kennedy would go on and on. He, I watched Jack Parr interview Billy Graham and nobody could care less about religion or Jesus Christ or Catholics <laughs> or any, all that, you know, all that, you know, talk about fairy tales. Yeah, but no, I was completely hey. enamored of Billy Graham, just the way is Jack Parr just let him go, just yeah. let him go, which is right. unheard of nowadays. You know, it doesn't happen, you know. So back, back in the day, so you could if like fully express yourself how you feel. Yeah, and yeah, now, it went and, now, on. and now like you can't even say certain words without people thinking you're a homophobe or you're a racist or whatever. And I'm a Mexican. I'm Mexican. And I speak wow. better English than most native. I'm not I, I hope you're not bragging. No, I'm not. Uh, I mean, I will, this is the one thing I will brag about. I am an American-born citizen. I uh, consider myself American. I, I am from Mexican descent. I know how to speak Spanish. But... It sounds like bragging now. No, it isn't bragging. It isn't bragging. Like, listen, my, my Spanish is okay. My English, I speak like a native speaker. And that's it. And it's like, it's like when Keith asked me, it's like, hey, did, did you want to help co-host with Jackie Martlin. I was like, you mean Jackie the Joke Man Martlin? Hell yeah. Well, Dude, there's only one Martin. Jackie. Yeah, please. Yeah, no, 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 My okay. next topic. Next topic. Next. We're moving on from yeah. Mexicans. Okay. Uh, we, I want to respect your time, so I, I just have two no, more I'm questions. Not, you don't have to worry about my time. Uh, okay, I yeah. was like... The next thing you know, he's going to make a fucking taco. <laughs> hey, listen, hey, if you don't want to make your taco... <laughs> I'll make well, I don't you like taco. I don't like taco. You want yeah. you like tortas? You like tortas? Yes. Okay then. Okay. You, you give me an address. I'll send you one. <laughs> I'm not so even Jack... talking with you because that's how much I love you. That, like, seriously, <laughs> seriously. Like no, no, no. You took me out of a funk watching that Red Fox special. You took me out of a funk because, like, when I heard that joke about like the Dallas and then like everything else, because also after you were done with the Dallas joke, you went to the next joke, the next joke, the next joke, the next joke, and I was like, "Oh wow, he's doing what Rodney does, but faster and better." And I love Rodney. Rodney, Rodney, Rodney is one of my heroes. And when I saw you, I was just like, "This is my heroes too." All right. Because like you, you don't, you don't skip a beat you legitimately say what you need to say and you get a laugh every single time because you're a master well, whether it's a short you. joke or whether it's a long joke and like so like people are oh, just... too many too many compliments more questions less compliments i appreciate it i totally no, 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 it's it. not about the compliments it's just the the, the positive the positive inflection that you put on my comedy career because it's just like Jackie the joke man Martling, like he legitimately tells it how it is, and he's funny. He's like, you know what I mean? You can be a little bit biased, but it doesn't matter if you're biased, you're right. All right. Well, uh, basically, Victor's trying to say he loves you. All right. Uh, so Jackie, I wanted I to ask I you. I wanted to ask you, do you think uh, now, like, because you started in radio, you know what I mean? And now uh, it seems like radio is being replaced with podcasting. Do you think radio is dead or do you think it's going to come back? You know what? I don't know. I don't care. Yeah. Um, it's, <laughs> it's so, it's so, uh, it's always all about the money and the podcasts are going to just, wind their way around to where 
they'll be, if they're not already, they're just going to be corporate and they're going to be radio and they're going to be ratings. Like it's nothing really changes. It really yeah. doesn't. Mm-hmm. I, I do know it makes me nuts. Like, all right, you know, my, my documentary, yeah, you can go see it. It's streaming in a hundred different places, but everybody yearns for the old turn on the TV and turn on channel four. And there's Carson, or you get in, get in the car and you turn on the radio and there's 10, 10 wins and, Mary the case playing oldies. Everything's just gotten so difficult and so crazy. Absolutely. And now every, every everybody, you know, my goddamn mailman's got a podcast, you know, and I said, is that your dog? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's my dog. He's got a podcast too, you know, like it's the Jesus Christ, you know, but yeah, they, yeah. It, it's, but it, it, they're never going to stop broadcasting. And I, and I love, there's nothing like going on the radio and sitting there and talking, and it's immediate, and people are hearing it. Yeah. You know, people record podcasts, and then they play them back, and you blah, blah, blah. But there's nothing like the – like when we were going full tilt on the Stern Show. Live. And 55, yeah. 55 markets, and we're out there live, and I would write something for Howard to say and put it up, and he would say it. And literally, literally five seconds after I wrote it, millions of people would be laughing. And that was, there's nothing more immediate than radio. That was just writer, fantastic. Writer just, and in-studio comedian, 1983 to 2001. So to be honest with you, and, I, and I've seen a lot of the episodes you were on, and <clears> quite <throat> frankly, you were too quick for the internet. I was I, I was there every, I was there every day uh, from 1986 to 2001. I was a regular, regular cast member, and I was the head writer and just writing line after line after line for Howard. And it they was were great. Uh, they were great. Great fun. Great fun. So, so when you when you left, I know it was because of money thing, but like, did you were you like kind of resentful that Artie Lang replaced you, or like how that because now yeah. you guys are friends? So like, you know that that is such a I'm glad you said that because that's one of the great mysteries. <clears throat> Artie Lang did not replace me. Artie was oh. a guy I, I knew him from coming in with more uh, with Norm. Norm, and he's a great guy and a really funny comic. I left in March. They supposedly they put like <clears throat> five or ten different people in my chair. They called it the Jackie chair after I left, and they kept putting people in there for a week at a time. And nobody was working out. <clears throat> and Artie started working on the show in October. Wow. Like six six months later, there was no crossover. There was never any animosity between me and Artie, even a little bit. The only time we ever took shots at each other was they, they roasted Howard. <clears throat> they had me come in to do it. So when there's a roast, you take shots at the other people. So me and Artie were taking shots back and forth. But that mm-hmm. you know that that's a roast. That has nothing to do with reality. I mean, he's a right. pal. I did, I did his direct TV show a bunch of times, and I did his podcast a bunch of times. He he wrote the introduction for my autobiography. You know, yeah. he's a and he's great in the in the documentary. He's one of the best things in the documentary. You know, yeah. So like, I I toured with Norm <laughs> for nine years, and when when he died, like I I've only met Artie once, like in passing. But when he died, I always thought maybe Artie, because like I still have a hard time coping with it, you know. So I always thought maybe Artie could help me with that, since you know before it was me, Artie was with him. You know what I mean? So like I was, that's just what I <coughs> thought. But uh, no, no, what you were opening act for Norm? Yeah, I was his opening act. Yeah. Feature, feature, feature. Well, great feature character. his last year, but I mean, I was mostly the opening act. Feature but, or, or host. Yeah. So, Jackie, where can the folks at home follow and support you? Um, if you want to see the documentary, please see the documentary. Uh, you know, so I did a show at the Cinegrill at the Roosevelt Hotel, at the Hotel uh, Roosevelt, you know, the Hollywood Roosevelt. Yeah. And and I got up and told a few jokes. And I said, listen, you can rent you can rent the movie for three ninety nine or four ninety nine, but you can buy it for like twelve ninety nine. And you can watch so, it again and again. Yeah, I say if you had one less joke in this really expensive place tonight, you could not only buy the movie and own it forever, you could have the popcorn to go with it. <laughs> they left their ass off. And I said, I, you know, 
that nowadays like 13 bucks is is nothing yeah. <clears throat> and that way you have the stupid thing to show people because everybody's always like you know it was my yeah. favorite party you know it was really funny and it if was. you have it right there to access it it's it's fun you know it was so that it, to get it that great it's, documentary. it's jokemanmovie.com jokemanmovie.com i answer all my emails Whatever anybody writes, I, I write back. My email is jokeland at AOL.com, jokeland at AOL.com. With the and I do those cameos, which are great fun. I make a lot of money doing cameo.com. You know, you, you know, you insult my father or, you know, tell a joke to my sister or my uncle's a nun, you know, make fun of them, you know. Oh. <clears throat> and I love doing those. And I, you know, and I tweet. You know, I do yeah. tweet and then Facebook and on Insta. Yeah, I don't really do those like other people do them. I just put my gigs up, you know, and I let people take shots at me and have a little bit of fun. And, Are you still every, doing your live joke line? Five one six nine two two wine. Nobody can believe that it's still up. It, it's been forty four years. Nice. And it's been constant operation for forty four years, and the stories are. <clears throat> just, I believe it. Just crazy. I I did oh. two and a half hour podcast with Bert Kreischer the other day, who I didn't. I I'm out of the loop. I don't know who he. And he sells he's our great, stadiums. Yeah. And he's and he's the Very greatest popular. guy. And he said when he's, when he's in Philadelphia, when he's a little kid, him and his brothers would close the door when he was like ten years old and dial nine two two wine and laugh at the dick jokes when they were little kids, which. <laughs> I love I love stories like that, you know. The whole world, the whole, I love when somebody says, "I used to call you a joke line thirty years ago," and I say, "Well, take out your iPhone and dial it." And they always remember the number and they dial it. And they, hey, this is Jackie. You know, I love it when you use your finger. Like Jesus Christ, it's still going. You know, which is fun. Yeah, it does. I've never made a. It's cost me a fortune for forty four years. I've never made a nickel. It's cost me money. It's a yeah. phone. It's the phone line in my home. At one point, it was 10 phone lines in my home. People, oh, you must have made a lot of money. They cost me a fortune for the phone lines and the answering machines and the tapes and the time. Yeah. But it That's worked. It got my name out there like a mother, you know. Yeah. Jackie, everybody, everybody that I know loves you. Everybody that I know think you're hilarious. And well, if any of them are girls, give them my number. Okay, listen. Okay, I, I uh, will. Absolutely. Oh, well, Jackie. I thought I said good J- Jokeland at AOL.com. I know I'm still on AOL. <laughs> I, I don't care. Jokeland. I'm, I'm grabbing. I'm grabbing. I'm grabbing because, like, yes, listen. Yeah. Listen, this, this is a big shout out to all the women because you know what? I'm a dude. I'm a straight dude. I ain't going to suck your dick. But if there's a lot of ladies, well, that that yeah. is the best news I've heard yet. <laughs> so I'm glad I didn't hold out. I think I'm glad I didn't hold out. I know I got this fruity ass shirt. Don't worry about it. But the, the the truth is, is just like you're a legend. You are very professional. You are without a doubt, like seriously. And that was just one of the jokes within that Red Fox special. That was just one joke. We're not talking about that joke yeah. anymore. Okay, no, no, we're Victor, not. Victor, we, no, he no, gets not. it. You love him. No, 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 okay. no. But, 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 but I, I, Jackie needs to know. That he knows. Like, You've been talking about it for 20 minutes. He knows. Uh, okay. I am totally was, convinced. Okay, okay, good, 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 good. Uh, so right. It might have been 30 years, but, like, like, I'm not telling you what to do. Take that joke out of retirement. That joke is fucking hysterical. I ain't telling you what to do. You do whatever you want. You'd be like, this fat Mexican fucking. You, you do whatever you want. And and it's fine, like like, but for reals, that is one of the funniest jokes. We're not talking ever. about that joke anymore, Victor. Okay, fine. Let's stop about that. But like, honestly, well, right. oh, I think this is a good time, Jackie. Last question: If you could go into a time machine and talk <clears throat> talk to a younger Jackie, uh, knowing what you know now, uh, what would you say to him? I would say every time a girl left the club. Or left the bar ah. and said she's coming back. She's going back. Wait, because right. five beautiful girls in my life have walked out of a bar or a restaurant because they had to leave and told me they were coming back. And I got impatient and I went home and every one of them came back and I missed them. 
Oh. Oh, That's oh, just wow. something stupid that I never had a chance to say. I don't know. That I, you know stupid. what? I wouldn't change. I would not change yeah. anything. I wouldn't do anything different. Uh, all the all the bumps into the wall and all the broken legs and 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 you know all all the wrong turns and wrong answers and the wrong questions. Mm-hmm. You know, that's it's all part of growing up, and it's been. Oh. I've been really, really lucky, and I wouldn't You're want to change legend. anything. You're you know, I don't legend. want to change. If you change You're anything, legend. you know. You're a legend. And, like, I'm, I'm a fat Mexican guy. And, like, you know what I mean? It's just, like, that's how much I love comedy. I'm, like, when I saw you the first time, I was just, like, this man is hysterical. Hysterical. And I'm not trying to kiss your ass. I was just more it's like... It's a little I'm, late. It's a little I late know. to say that. I, I, no, no, no. I was just like in a depressed... I was in a depressed state of, a state of mind. And then I saw your I, I saw your segment on the Red Fox, and I was just like... Well, I'm glad I helped. No, uh, you did help a, a ton, and you did. And so I just want you to know that the, the positive impact that you've had on my life is, is really significant. I'm starting to think I might have to send you a bill. Yeah, I know. Well, Jackie, thank you so much for rifting with us. I really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, uh, I can't wait to watch a joke, man. And, you know, everyone's going to love it. And thank you so much for taking time to talk to us, man. And thank you. You know what? I'm actually going to go back and and find that stupid Dallas joke and pull it off of that Red Fox video. And Uh I'm going to put it up on my website just to see if people get a kick out of it. Oh, that, it, that would make Vickers' day. I okay, know. Look, I, look, yeah, All right, I'm going to I'm I'm go ask you on you. Facebook. And, then, good. And, and when I find that clip, even if I can't find that clip, I have it on DVD. My brother has it on DVD. I'll put it up there. I'll thank you. you. All right, well, thanks, Jackie. And uh, we'll You're see great. you next time, buddy. You're All great. right, anytime. Thank you. You're listening to Razor Riffs with Keith Razor and Alan Lee right here on L.A. Talk Radio.